All, please rise for the Honorable James Saratsky. Please be seated. State of New Jersey versus Jasmine Tunsil. Jasmine Tunsil present, please bring her forward. to have decorum in these proceedings. Please remain quiet and attentive. Jasmine Tunsil. All right, please stand. I understand that in this matter, in which you've been charged with one count of aggravated manslaughter in the first degree under NJSA 2C 11 4C, one count of aggravated assault by auto under NJS 2C 12 1, and driving while intoxicated under NJSA Title 39, Section 4 50 that you have indicated that you do not wish to proceed to trial and you wish to enter a plea of guilty. Is that true? And are you doing this freely and voluntarily? All right, please raise your right hand to be sworn. Do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give in this matter shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? All right. And are you entering into this guilty plea because on June 6, 2019, you had operated a motor vehicle in the city of Clifton and before operating that vehicle, you had consumed alcohol. Yes. Do you remember what you had recalled before, op or what you had consumed before operating that vehicle that day? 
Do you remember how much beer you had consumed? Do you admit, because of the beer that you had consumed that day before operating the vehicle, that you were intoxicated and that you operated the vehicle while in an intoxicated state? Yes. Do you also admit that while operating that vehicle and while under the influence, you were involved in a motor vehicle accident? And that motor vehicle accident involved two bicyclists, is that correct? Is it true, and do you admit that because of your actions and being involved in that motor vehicle accident, that one of the bicyclists, Muhammad Zachariah, died from injuries that were the result of that accident? And do you admit that there were serious bodily injuries inflicted upon the second bicyclist, Armini Brinson, because of you operating the vehicle that day? All right. I find the defendant has entered into this guilty plea freely and voluntarily. She's admitted the violation of the statutes in question for aggravated assault, aggravated manslaughter, and driving while intoxicated. Enter a finding of guilty of the defendant based upon her statements under oath. This matter can now proceed towards sentencing. Ms. Tunsil. Is there anything that you wish to tell me that you ask me to consider in deciding what the penalty and sentence in this case should be? No, I was, I was All right. Consid considering the facts as presented in this case, the statements under oath of the defendant, I want to start off by saying you're 18 years old, is that correct? Yes. At the age of 18, the law considers you an adult. Most people look forward to that day and the independence that it brings. But independence comes with responsibility as well. As an adult, you realize that so many decisions that you make on a day-to-day -day basis have great impact far beyond yourself. As shown in this case, one reckless decision can change and can horribly destroy so many lives. I ask you to consider the victim killed in this accident, Muhammad Zachariah. There was an injured party, seriously, bottled, seriously injured, Armani Brinson. Consider family and friends and your own family and friends. And consider how your decisions that day affected all of them. Because of the charges that have been filed against you to which you've now admitted, you now face a mandatory state prison sentence. The independence that you look forward to and that you use to decide to drink and drive on the day in question will in large part now be stripped from you. Every part of your day, every part of your day-to-day -day existence will now be controlled by someone outside of you. What you wear, what you eat, when you eat, when you make a phone call, when you may be permitted to see anyone who may come to see and visit you, all of these activities that you probably never considered before will now be regulated. And the responsibility for all of this lies only with you. Pursuant to New Jersey Statute 2C, colon 44-1, the court must assess the aggravating and mitigating factors in determining the appropriate sentence to be imposed. I find the following aggravating factors apply. The nature and circumstances of the offense and the role of the actor therein. I find, based upon the sworn testimony of the defendant herself, that she was solely responsible for what happened that day, that she was intoxicated under the legal age to consume alcohol, and she operated a motor vehicle on the roads of the city in Clifton in the early morning hours of June 6, 2019. You put yourself, obviously you put other people at risk besides the two people who were injured that day, one dead, one seriously injured, other people on the road, law enforcement officers that had to interact with you, and you placed yourself at serious risk. I find that your actions that day were absolutely reckless and inexcusable. Second consideration is the gravity and seriousness of the harm inflicted on any victims. The defendant's actions in this matter led to the death of one individual, Muhammad Zachariah, and to serious bodily injuries to Armani Brinson. I also consider the need to deter this defendant and any others from violating the law. I hope the defendant, 
I hope, ma'am, that you fully understand your guilt in this matter and that others realize the seriousness of these types of decisions and actions. The criminal justice system exists not just to punish those who break the law, but to serve the society of good, the good of society, rather, at large. In considering mitigating factors, I find the following mitigating factors apply. Number seven, this defendant has no prior history of delinquency or criminal activity. You've never been in court before, you've never been in trouble before, and you come now before this court facing these charges. Number eight, the character and attitude of this defendant indicate that you're unlikely to commit another offense, and I do find from the presentation and the statements of the defendant that you are remorseful and that you do accept the seriousness and the responsibility for these actions. There's a consideration under the statute, factor number two, that the defendant, quote, did not contemplate that your conduct would cause serious harm, close quote. And true, while there's no evidence in this case that on the date in question you intentionally set out to cause serious harm that resulted from your actions. But what concerns me is exactly that, that you took these actions without fully contemplating the result of what those actions could be. The decisions that you made on that day set in motion a series of events that led to a catastrophic accident, the death of one person and the serious injury to another, and the prosecution of yourself. And I'll just point out that all of this could have been avoided in probably one minute's time. A phone call, a text, Uber or Lyft could have gotten you home safely and avoided all of this tragedy. I find the aggravating factors significantly outweigh the mitigating factors and accordingly, a sentence of imprisonment in this matter is absolutely appropriate. Accordingly, the sentence of this court is as follows. As to count one, the charge of aggravated manslaughter. The statutes of New Jersey require a prison sentence of a term between 10 to 30 years. The New Jersey No Early Release Act applies, which requires that in crimes of violence, the defendant serve 85% of the prison term before you can even be considered for release on parole. I hereby sentence the defendant to a term of imprisonment for a term of 30 years. As required, as required by law, as required by law, I must advise all parties of the earliest possible date for your release on parole. The earliest that this defendant may even be considered to be released from custodial sentence in prison after serving 85% of this sentence will be December 6, 2044, 25 and one half years from this date. By my calculation, at the time that you can even be considered for parole for the first time, you'll be 43 years old. As to count two, aggravated assault by auto, sent the statutes call for a prison sentence for a term between three to five years, and I hereby sentence you to a concurrent term of five years custody, concurrent with count one. As to the count of driving while intoxicated, the statute requires an imposition of a fine of $30,000 and a suspension of driving privilege for a period of time after you're released from prison for a period anywhere between five years and for life. I impose the fine of $30,000 as required by the statute. As for the suspension period, I'll impose the minimum required term under the statute, a five-year term of suspension that will begin at the time of your release from prison. That concludes sentencing in this matter. Officers, remove the defendant. All right, settle down. Thank you, Judge Saratsky, for your presentation today. I'm now going to turn the microphone over to Clifton Traffic Officer Derek Fogg. All right, good morning. My name is Patrolman Derek Fogg. I'm a patrolman in the traffic division of, in the city of Clifton here. Okay, I'll, me, along with the other members of my unit, 
are uh, the accident reconstructionists that actually come out and do these fatal accidents and rebuild them and build the case to prosecute somebody that's in that, that situation. There's a few things that you need to take out of this, okay? Um, I know you're all seniors. We're at the end of your careers here at the high school. Um, and we all appreciate that you, you're still here and that you've continued your education, okay? This is part of your education here and this is a life lesson. What you saw today is a reality in this city, okay? We have more pedestrians struck and a pedocyclist is considered a pedestrian in our terms, okay? In this city that are either seriously wounded or fatally killed, okay? Or, or they're fatal accidents is what we call them. We have more of those than anyone who dies in a car accident. Okay, that's why we changed the scenario this year so that it would be a little more realistic to the things that actually go on in this city. Okay. Now, are they all DWI related? No, they're not. Okay, but some of them are. All right, I see a lot of you, okay, that not all of you, but there's a lot of you who ride your bicycles around here and you're doing wheelies down the street and all these other things. This is a reality. Okay, if you get hit, I'm picking you up, okay? That's very important for you. With the DWIs, okay, you are all getting into a point of, this, of your year now where you have parties, graduation parties, proms, grad, you know, things of that nature, okay? Does anybody in this room know what the, the criteria is for when you were considered intoxicated, what the level is? You all had a driver's license test, so what is it? It's 0 .08, okay? Now, 0 .08 is a level of blood alcohol content that makes you what we call intoxicated. Is anyone in this room of you students 21 years old? No. All right, let's, so now, what do you think your level is? It is zero, .001 which means if there is any trace of alcohol in your system, you will be arrested for DWI. Okay, we don't have DUI in this state, we have DWI in this state. And you'll be arrested for that, okay? That means if we bring you in and we put you on our Alcast machine and there is any trace alcohol in your system, you will be considered DWI because you are not 21 years old. Remember that, okay? I've been here 20 years. 20 years I've been a police officer in the city of Clifton. I have picked up two students of this school dead on the highway in my career. This is a reality. Both were struck highways, okay? It's a reality. It is no fun for us in the middle of the night to knock on your door and tell your grandparents or anybody else that you were laying dead in a highway somewhere or in a hospital. We take no joy in it, and neither should you. But it's a reality, I am telling you. In my last 20 years, I have picked up two students of this school off the highway, okay? Both were killed on impact on our highways. And some of the teachers here will probably remember those students. Okay, I'm gonna leave their names out, but it's, not, it's a very sad situation. It's, it's very traumatizing to the school, okay? I do not one of these officers ever want to do that, and none of one of these teachers want to be involved in that either. There are a couple of rules you need to follow as you are moving on. Okay. Most of you have driver's licenses, you have provisional driver's licenses. Okay, there are some rules that need to be followed, and we will be enforcing them, I promise you. Okay, those, re those rules are for a reason, because every year in this state, every year in this state, this time of year, during prom season, during graduations, students are killed in vehicles, okay? There's too many students in a vehicle and too many distractions. It will happen this year. You will see it on the news. It happens every year, okay? We don't want that to happen in the city of Clifton. We'll be enforcing the rules of provisional driver's licenses. If you have a provisional driver's license, you're not allowed to drive between the hours of 11 p.m. and 5 a.m. unless you are coming home from work, coming home from school, or a family emergency, or some type of emergency. You are not permitted to have more than one other person in your vehicle unless that person is 21 years of age, okay? 
and you are not allowed to use any electronic devices other than the radio that is in your vehicle. Okay, if your car is equipped with Bluetooth, you may not use it. Okay, yes, it's hard to prove. I get it. Okay, but if I catch you on it, I will take it for it. Okay, you are not allowed to use hands-free devices, Bluetooth earpieces, or anything of that nature. Telling me that your phone's on speaker, not an option. You are not allowed to use any electronic devices while operating your vehicle other than the radio that's built into your vehicle. Okay? Those are the rules of that. You need to follow them. Okay? The last thing, again, your DWI. Your DWI, if there is any trace amounts of alcohol in your system, okay, any trace, you will be arrested for DWI. The worst case scenario you just saw, 30 years and 43 years old, that is most of your whole lives, okay? There'll be no secondary college education, okay? Though you might be able to get a degree while you're in jail, but then you're a convicted felon. Good luck getting it, okay? what it does to your family, what it does to other families. These are all important things to remember. Our hope, each one of you moves on in your lives. Whether you go to college, you get a job, you begin your own families, and you can move on also. So please, please, okay, don't drink and drive, don't violate your provisional driver's license rules, okay, and be safe, because again, We've already buried two students from this school, okay? And I really don't want to have to go through that again. All right, thank you for your time. Enjoy your graduation. Congratulations on finishing school. Good luck. Thank you again for your indulgence. Before I turn it over to your principal, Mr. Doctor, I want to thank the Clifton Police Department for working with us again, the Clifton Fire Department, Judge Saratsky, uh, Bishop Quinlan Funeral Home. Uh, keep in mind, folks, that CASA sponsors and supports Project Graduation. We are signing up, I think, the 10th, 11th, and 12th here in the lobby for Project Graduation this year. So 6.30 to 8.30 on the 10th, 11th, and 12th. Uh, again, I want to, CASA wants to thank you for coming here today participating with us, and I'm going to turn it over now to your principal, Ms. Mike Doctor. Can I get a quick round of applause for Mr. Whittles, Ms. Bassford, all the <laughs> who put on this terrific event for us, the Clifton Police and Fire Department for all of their help, our judge who came in and acted as a judge for today, and our students who helped out. Thank, all, thank you all.